Yeah, filter blood. That's yeah, they filter the waste products out of the blood. So they filter yeah. blood specifically to remove, remove the waste products. And that's the main function. The main function of the kidneys is the answer that you're going to write down when I say it. So <laughs> that only one I'm going to fight him. The main function of the kidneys. Is to filter the blood and remove waste from the body. Main function of the kidneys is to filter the blood and remove waste from the body. Gonna, it's going to help, or they're going to help to regulate the composition of blood. The kidneys are going to help to regulate the composition of blood. So that waste, where, where did that waste arise? From where did that waste originate? Everywhere. From blood. Actually. That waste that the kidneys are filtering out of the blood, right? Mm -hmm. Where did it where did it originate? Uh, from food. Not from food. From air. Not from air. Water. Water. Okay, this is a simple answer. I feel like it is, but. Like, is certain blood in it? A certain blood? Is that certain blood? Certain blood is definitely not an answer. Well, not certain blood, but. Waste. Waste. Wastes. From where did that waste originate? First of all, what does blood do? Circulates. It's a one word answer. What's it do? Circulates. No. Attract. What? No. Um, blood. We did this. Um, blood transports. It transports. And what does it transport? Vitamins, minerals, nutrients. Nutrients. And to where does it transport the nutrients? Everywhere. Everywhere. So the nutrients includes oxygen, glucose, proteins, all those things. And it transports it to every place in the body. Because every cell in the body needs things like oxygen. And then what does every cell in the body create? Energy. It creates energy, and it creates carbon dioxide, and it also creates other waste. So that would be things like CO2. Urea, which is a nitrogen-based waste. So what do we want to do with the waste? Get rid of it. Get rid of it. So what does blood do? Transports. Transports. What does it transport? Well, tra transports nutrients to where they need to go, and it, tra and it transports wastes oh away from the cells. Where's it going to transport that CO2 to? The lungs. The lungs. To breathe it out. To breathe it out. Where's it going to transport? Hmm. Where's it going to transport that urea to? The the kidneys to pee it out. So listen to this. This is important to realize. I, I think I've stressed this a lot over the past several weeks. The waste products from the gastrointestinal system, remember I call that stuff leftover. Because if you can't break it down, 
If you can't absorb it, what happens to it? It keeps going through. So most of that waste product is not metabolic waste. Most of that waste product is just leftover waste. You couldn't break it down. You couldn't absorb it, so it kept going through. This is waste product that is created. This is metabolic waste. In other words, waste that is created from metabolism. Remember metabolism? We're putting in products in order to do something. In the process, we create waste. This is metabolic waste. So the kidneys have to filter that metabolic waste out. That's exactly what they do, and they do a really good job. So metabolic waste is, you say, we, like, um, our, our system typically does it like... Our cells create it. Our cells, okay. Cells. Just like with a car engine, we create carbon monoxide. Mm -hmm. We didn't put carbon monoxide into the engine, it was created as a, as a chemical reaction. This is waste that's created as chemical reactions. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. A little bit of sense? Mm -hmm. Apple sense? Apple sense. And what would be the other one? It's like metabolic waste and what else? Anyone else? I don't know which one. You said cells that are created from 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 you said from chemicals? And chemical reactions. From chemical yeah. reaction. What about the cells that are created? From something else. No, all cells created as a result of chemical oh, reactions. It's, not it's biochemistry. Okay. We're creating energy, we're making proteins. In the process of doing that, we're going to make metabolic waste. And we have to have it. Part we're going to pee out. That's what urine is. Urine is metabolic waste. It's not leftover waste. That's poo. That's the stuff that we couldn't break down, we couldn't absorb. <laughs> metabolic waste is the stuff that we've created as a result of biochemistry. Does that make some sense? Yeah. So our blood is constantly going to have nutrients in it, but our blood's also going to constantly have some waste product in it until it gets to the lungs where a lot of that waste product is gone and gets to the kidneys where a lot of that waste product is gone, it's filtered out. But it's going to pick up more. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So would you say that venous blood, like any blood going circulating back the to the heart, back mm -hmm. would have waste in it? Mm -hmm. And then blood Arterial that's blood coming would from have the more nutrients in the form of like oxygen. Gotcha. Then waste. So is that what gives them the lighter versus darker color? Um, or is that it's, the oxygen? it's more it's more about the depletion of the oxygen. That's what I thought. Yeah. Okay. But um, it's interesting if you consider this, because remember, you guys are going to learn how to take blood out of a vein. Mm -hmm. Well, look at all the information we can get from that. If we take blood out of a vein, we can get all kind of ideas of how things are working in the body based mm -hmm. on that metabolic waste that's being created. Um, we can also see things like hormones, of course, because hormones are released into the blood, and they're going to go where they need to go. Uh, we're going to see proteins that are in the blood. Of course, we're going to see all the different blood cells, the red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. Now, how can you, so I know that you said hormones are like a, a message, yes. a chemical message. Yes. So, like you're saying, but you can find hormones in there. Is that like in the form of a cell, or how do you, quote unquote, find the hormones? Hormone is a chemical. That's all it is. So... It'll just be released in the blood, so all you're going to do is look into the, the chemical. blood and see the chemical there. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, it's not going to be a part of the cell or anything like that. Gotcha. It's different with, like, um, cholesterol, because cholesterol is usually not free in the blood. It's usually transported, which is why we look for the transporters. We talked about uh, looking at cholesterol levels. We look at the actual transporters, the high-density lipoproteins, and the low density microbiotes, the, the good and the bad transporters, rather than the good or bad cholesterol that doesn't exist. Remember, cholesterol is cholesterol. There is no good or bad. 
It's the transporters that we're looking that we're seeing. A lot, of, a lot of information in blood since blood goes everywhere and we put all kinds of stuff in our blood. All you got to do is look in the blood and we get a lot of information. That's why it's so important to take blood. What's the first thing? Yes. Urine. What was your question? You don't have a question. Okay. I did, but I just saw it. Okay. Um, so, <clears throat> mm, yes. Mm, yeah. I'm just waiting to then, I guess we talk about, are we going to talk about the female reproductive system? Because somebody asked me a stupid question this weekend. Um, what was the stupid question that was asked? <sighs> Transport. One word answer, blood transports. And what does it transport? Nutrients. Nutrients. And where does it transport nutrients to? Love Everywhere. And what else does it transport? You said what else does it transport? That's CO2. a nutrient. Uh, yeah, what do we call that? Carbon. Oxidated blood. I mean, no. it has to go back no. blood. More generic. What do we call that? Well, CO2? Yeah. That okay. we've created. Carbon Don't dioxide. stop overthinking waste. this. Waste. Carbon dioxide. Waste. So we transport nutrients, we transport wastes. Blood transports nutrients, blood transports wastes. Does that make sense? And what does it transport nutrients to? To the lungs. Oh, to, to the cells. Which cells? All cells. All cells. So it transports nutrients everywhere. So where does it pick up waste from? Everywhere. Listen to this. Where does it pick up waste from? Everywhere. everywhere. If we're going to be transporting nutrients everywhere, we're going to pick up waste from everywhere. And then, of course, we're going to have to get rid of that waste. And that's what the kidneys do. They get rid of metabolic waste. So important to understand this. And you have to understand the, the basic concept of what blood does in order to get this. Now, if you look at the urinary system, really simple. The design of this is simple. We have two kidneys. They're in the abdominal pelvic region. But they're really towards the back. They're behind the peritoneum. So we say they're in the retroperitoneal space or in the flank of the back. So they're really close to the back. You'll notice here, the right kidney, remember it's always the patient's right or left, the right kidney is lower than the left kidney. Look up here, stop looking at your phone. The right kidney is lower than the left kidney. Why is that? The heart. No, no the heart's above the diaphragm. Oh. Why is the right kidney lower than the left kidney? Because of the heart. Not the heart. The heart's up here. Oh, wow. The lungs are up here, above the diaphragm. This is the diaphragm. The lungs are way up here. The liver? The liver. The liver takes up a lot of space. So let's take a quick look at PAPT. Please look at me. What organ is this right here? This is the liver. What organ is this right here? This is the stomach. There's a transverse colon. Whole mess of small intestines. Here we have the ascending colon, the descending colon, and the sigmoid colon, the pancreas. So look at what I had to do to get to the kidneys here. Look up here. Stop writing. Look up here. Kidney, kidney. They're really much closer to the back. Look at the right kidney. See its location? Look at the size of the liver. The liver takes up a lot of space on the right side. So when we were developing the uterus, going from small things to getting bigger and bigger and bigger, our kidneys actually start out lower. And as we grow and grow and grow, they sort of move up this way. Well, this one can only move up so far because the liver's taking up a lot of space. And then, if we have organs that are going to filter waste out, what's the next step once we filter out the waste? We've got to get rid of it. Look up here again, please. You've got to get this simple concept down.
Kidney, kidney. You see this right here? Yeah. Here's a tube called a ureter. Here's another tube called a ureter. The waste that we've filtered, that we've created, look up here, stop looking there. Learn this. The waste that we've created, the kidneys have filtered, is now going to drain down these tubes into a storage container. What's the name of that storage container? The urinary bladder. All it does is store urine. It doesn't create urine. All it does is store urine. If we didn't have a urinary bladder, we would be dripping urine as we walked along. Yeah. Well, you say ooh, but everybody would be doing it, so it would be like, no big deal. Some people would just be dripping more urine than others. But instead of dripping urine, we store it until it's appropriate to get rid of it. That's what the bladder does. It's just a storage compartment. Can it stretch? No. Yes. Uh. Of course it can. Because that's to fill it. And then there's one tube. There's one tube that is going to take that urine. and remove it from the body. And this is called the urethra. So there are two ureters. These are the tubes that drain from the kidney into the bladder. There's one urethra. One tube that's going to drain it to the outside world. Here's the significance of that. This is why I'm pointing it out to you. And you should be paying attention. In a male, the urethra is seven to eight inches long. In a female, it is one to two inches long. Think about the opening of the urethra, the urethral meatus. Think about the opening. Where is it located? In that dirty area down here. So there's going to be a lot of bacteria around the opening. Lots of bacteria around the opening. All that bacteria has to do is get up here, move up the urethra, and into the bladder, ladies. Ladies. All the bacteria has to do is move up that short urethra and into the bladder, and now you have a urinary tract infection. Look at this. This is why guys don't get urinary tract infections, because the urethra is so much longer. By the time that bacteria tries to get up here, what's going to happen? Urine's going to come and flush it all out. Here, it's a short journey. Much, much faster to go from the opening into the bladder. But men can handle They can, but it's, it's much less common. We see it more commonly in men who have a catheter, like a urinary catheter. Because that's is that what it is? well, it's a tube that goes all the way up the urethra into the bladder, so it has to get pushed up there, which means it could push bacteria up there, and it often does. Or men who've had like uh, scar tissue forming here as a result of gonorrhea, or of course babies, but most of the time, I'm sorry. Most of the time, uh, women are much, 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 much more likely to get urinary tract infection. This is why we tell women, empty your bladder post-coitus, because that process of coitus causes a lot of friction, pushes a lot of that bacteria up her urethra. So if afterwards she pees, I'm going to push it right out. Yes? How do people get catheters? Like, how, what is the cause of men having catheters? Why would a person have a catheter? Mm -hmm. Everything from uh, dysfunctional bladder like to uh, somebody having to undergo surgery. Is that to stay in it? Um, they tend to not stay in permanently, but they could be in for a long time. And just remove it and put a new one in. And put a new one in. Oh, wow. 
Maybe someone who's paralyzed. Mm -hmm. Would it help some pain? It doesn't help. It, it just it urine just drains okay. right out of it into the bag. Oh, okay. We'll we'll do this before some surgical procedures. Um, yeah, so female. Have a bowel Not a bowel movement. Well, this is so they can pee. this is urine. If we want to empty the bladder, um, I don't know. Let's see. How hour? How, how right many before hours? Right before surgery, I just put a straight catheter right in and just empty the bladder right there onto the floor. The floor, before I had the floor. Yeah, on the surgical floor, there's a drain. Okay. Now, would you typically know, like, if you feel like, okay, this this procedure is going to take more than seven hours, let's let's perform the catheter. Let's like, insert a catheter. Well, let's insert the catheter. Yeah. Like typically, y'all would know like the yeah. hour range. Okay. Yeah. I'll show you one later on. Woo. <laughs> um, no. Yeah, we'll be fine. I. Like, I, I never knew about, like, I'll see, like, minutes, I think about it, like, I had to change someone's bag, but I didn't know the whole process. I'll show you. Of, I'll like, show you the whole process. Inside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. oh. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Go right now. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right, look up on the board again, please. Medical assistance. This is important to you. You need to understand this. Notice the length of the male urethra, much longer than the female urethra, right? Notice the opening of the urethra, lots of bacteria there. So, ladies, if you're going to get a patient that has to give a urine specimen, if they just start peeing in a cup, this bacteria that's right here is going to be in at the, the opening is going to go into the cup, so that's which makes the doctor think what? They have bacteria. They have a urinary tract infection. Yeah. So clean well, we got to get rid of that bacteria before they pee in the cup. Oh. How do we do that? White. Uh, white with what? The, the, the uh, antiseptic. Yeah, a little betadine white. Mm -hmm. they, also, they also tell you, like, do not cut, like, the first, first drop. Yeah, they drop yeah. it, yeah. yeah. Then pee in it, yeah. Yes. Uh, because the reality is, you don't have to do the white. They're going to teach you how to do that. They're going to tell you you're supposed to do that. But yeah, the reality is, if all you have, if all you do is get a midstream catch, in other words, start peeing and, and pee. then stick the cup into it, that's, that's so hard. starting the pee is going to push all that bacteria away into the toilet. All this, Just so then it's not going to show up in the cup. And then in the middle of the stream, stick your cup into the pee. Mm -hmm. And now it's called a midstream catch for a reason. Now we have a nice clean urine specimen because otherwise it could look like there's bacteria in the urine which could look like a bacterial infection in the bladder when there's not. If it's a young boy, just put the cup on the floor and say hit your target because of course they're going to miss at first but eventually they'll get some in there. If it's a baby, we can do a suprapubic puncture, which is this. We can get a needle and stick it in right above <laughs> the pubic symphysis, right into the urinary bladder of the baby. And then no, baby. just drain the urine right out that way. That way we know what we're getting is clean. Child volunteer pee pee on. Oh, baby. <laughs> okay, pee baby. You want yeah, some milk? Good luck with that. You want some milk? <laughs> My baby pee on me all yeah. the time. There's also <laughs> a special bag that you could put on that has like um, adhesive. But you have to clean the whole area and then stick this bag on. And put the diaper on. Yeah. Or like that? Yeah. Diaper suit but on. That's, that's a way to that's get That's still it. too long. Yeah, that's too long. Yeah, easier to just get a needle up in there. and uh, stick the needle right through. It goes right through the skin. I don't hurt. It's like almost getting a TV. What? You say it goes right through the skin. It's a needle that you go, you push through the skin oh. into the urinary bladder. Oh, right through the urethra. It goes like this. It goes right through this. In the bladder? In through the skin. Wow. What, did, what did you think I was talking about? You get a needle, we you stick it through the skin into the urinary bladder. Wow. Oh. Oh. 
Yes. I ain't gonna tell you what I thought you were talking about. Now, um, when we were talking about getting rid of conflict right away, and they think that you know with the UTI, if, and they give you the medication. Well, they give you the medication for it, and, and you don't have it. Does it do anything no. to the body? Not that you don't no, 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 it it'll be an antibiotic. So it's going to carry all the side effects of the antibiotic you carry, but it's not going to cause any detrimental effects. You know, you'll be can, fine. Can a person not have a bladder? I be born without a bladder. Oh, oh, I wow. I suppose so. I mean, a person can be born pretty much just about any without anything. I don't know what that's called. I, I've never heard of that. What? I don't know what that's called. I've never heard of that. I think it's just like those viruses, like kind of these, you know, like the I mean, if they don't have a, a urinary bladder, they pro they're probably missing other parts as well. Mm, they have to. But I, I don't, I don't know. In the history, what? Like the ones who had the like, Cyrenomelia. Yeah. The mermaid syndrome. Yeah. Well. Their their legs are fused together. It doesn't mean that they don't have internally. They don't have a urinary bladder. They might, but I don't know. You know that would be a case by case as to whether or not they would have more or less of the external genitalia. But uh, that would be a baby that wouldn't survive anyway, probably. Uh, but again, depending upon what else is wrong. I don't know. Can it be possible people be born with two um, anus homes? Whoa. Is it? Is it? Is it? I don't know. Uh, I'm trying to think of even if there's a there's a way that a, a, child, a person can be born, a child can be born Without a period. with that's one true. anus that's sort of like bifurcated. What that means, like, like, like split, no, like split, like instead of like this, like there's something in between, like a wall or something. That I don't know. I'm, I don't know. I'm thinking. I'm trying to determine in my head if that's possible by the way that it's created. I mean, there's a there's a possibility that the anus could not be patent. Listen, could not be open. Not be open, like there's no opening for no. the anus. And, uh, and there's no hole. Yes, that could be possible. But a hole. This is one of the reasons why we like to do that first temperature rectally. When the oh, baby comes out, that's because the way to if, test you, it. if you're taking the temperature rectally, if you get a temperature, if I'm looking at a piece of paper and I say, I see that the baby had a temperature of 98.4 and the temperature was taken rectally, well, then I know two things. I know that the baby got old. I know that the temperature and I know that the anus is patterned. Yeah. Huh. Is that, you said that's the reason? Oh, that's just like. That's oh. one of the reasons why it's still done that way. Yeah. Huh. Interesting. It is interesting, I know. Why don't you listen to me? So, I have interesting things to say. I mean, we listen to We're taking a break. It's this <laughs> I don't know now. What does nitrogenous mean? What does nitrogenous mean? Nitrogenous waste. Yes, exactly. Nitrogenous waste Whoa. is waste that's made up of nitrogen. And you know, renal pertaining to the kidneys. Reno is a kidney. We know, Reno. Urino. Urine. Urine. Uro is also urine. So, urological is pertaining to the study of the urine. Yes? Yes. Yes. Uh, what's a nephrectomy then? 
No, I don't know. Nephro also means kidney. To remove the kidney. Surgical removal of the kidney. Neph. Nephrectomy. He said. Nephro means kidney. Okay. That was from day one. Nephro. Remember, you should have that on note cards. Nephro and Reno was yeah. the kidney. Urination. Process of, of urinating. urology. Study of the urine. Study of the urine. Uh, we'll talk more about the nephron later. <laughs> Nephrologist, a specialist in the study of the kidneys. Urologist, specialist in the study of urine. You know, there's people that just study urine? Yeah. Well, you're in the urinary system. Yeah. What changed it? What's that? Well, realize that um, the urinary system made up of like well, the kidneys, the ureters, the urinary bladder, and the urethra in males also includes the prostate. Oh, okay. Because the prostate like surrounds the urethra this way, like the urethra goes through it. So it's included in that. Uh, what would renal cell carcinoma be? Excuse me? What would renal cell carcinoma be? A cancer, uh, a cancerous tumor of the kidney, kidney? cell. Yes. Exactly. Or the cell in, pertaining to the cell. Yeah. Pertaining to the kidney cell. Uh, Lowe's <coughs> tumor. It's also called a nephroblastoma. This is a type of tumor they look for in kids. So if you have a kid, um, your pediatrician does this. And one of the ways they do this is by seeing the kid on the end of the exam table with their shirt off, have them bend over, and look at their back. Now, of course, you're going to think they're looking at what? Sign. Yeah, it's retrieval column. You're going to think they're looking to see if there's any scoliosis or anything, for instance. Which, they could also be looking for that at the same time. But... When it comes to looking for a Wilms tumor, they're going to look for something called hemihypertrophy. One side of the body will actually look larger than the other. Like, or this way. This way. Is it a major, a major difference? Or? It depends on how big it is. There can be a visual difference, yeah. You can actually see the difference. And if that's the case, if you see a physical difference, then you have to do other types of exams, right, diagnostic tests. And if they find this tumor, they're going to cut it out. They're probably cut out the whole kidney. But why is that okay? No, another one. Another one, yeah. So bad news is it's a tumor. Good news is if we cut it out, <clears throat> it kiddos another kidney. Wait, so what exactly is a blastoma? I don't know what the um, origin of the blasto is. Okay. Wait, the first one causes renal cell carcinoma. Is that? That's a type of cancer. Yeah, it gives renal cells. It could, yeah. But there's lots of reasons for renal cell. Um, an adenoma is a glandular tumor. A who? Glandular. A gland means something that secretes things like hormones. And we'll find out later on that the kidneys secrete hormones. They secrete things like erythropoiet, which is... Sounds dangerous. <laughs> no, erythropoietin is important. Um, it's probably so important that you'll see it on a final exam in anatomy, which means it's probably on that sheet. Erythropoiet. <coughs> yes. Blast means germ or immature cell. Therefore, blastoma is a cancer made of immature cells. Okay, a germ cell. Well, that that's why uh, we see this in kids. Because it comes from the origin. 
So where are you Wilms from? I'm sorry? Wilms? That's just a person's name. Uh, they found they Probably discovered, discovered it. it or something, yeah. Where is this? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> What happens is, this is a hormone that's sent from the kidneys to tell the bone marrow to make more red blood cells. So if blood pressure suddenly drops, like a person who is in a severe accident is losing a lot of blood, if they're losing a lot of blood, their blood pressure is going to drop because they're losing volume. If their blood pressure drops, their kidneys will sense that. They'll pick up on that change in blood pressure, that sudden change, and say, well, we must be losing blood, which means we're losing red blood cells. So it'll release erythropoietin to tell the bone marrow, make more red blood cells. And by the way, take the ones you've already started to make and mature them faster. Babies will release a lot of erythropoietin during that labor and delivery process which means there'll be a lot of red blood cells that they'll be making. And then those red blood cells will be breaking down. And they break down into their components, their protein component and their um, heme component, which gets broken down into unconjugated bilirubin, which collects in the tissue which causes their skin to appear yellowish. That's that physiologic jaundice of the newborn, which can cause problems in the brain, and we call it connectoris, if we don't take care of it. So all we gotta do is make it water soluble and we'll pee it out. Here's a fun word. Acute glomerular nephritis. Uh, there's lots of things that can cause acute glomerular nephritis. Unfortunately, we've not discussed <coughs> what the glomerulus is. So it's going to be difficult to understand what's happening here. But the glomerulus is the actual filtering part of the nephron of the kidneys. So this is inflammation of the actual filtering part of the functional unit of the kidneys. Here's what I want you to remember with acute glomerular nephritis. Although there are lots of things can cause this, one of the main causes is actually strep throat. And this confuses people because they think, well, wait a minute, strep throat, that's way up here. How does that cause something in our kidneys? Because it's lava. No. No. Um, you know, when we are invaded by bacteria, for instance, our body creates something to destroy it. Creates antibodies, for instance, mm -hmm. to get rid of the invading pathogen. But what ends up happening is those antibodies actually start to destroy the filters in the kidneys. And this can happen a couple of weeks to about a month after somebody has strep throat. They're going to complain of things like difficulty making urine. And the very first thing the emergency room doctor is going to ask them is, have you had strep throat in the past month? But the good news is it's acute, right? What does acute mean? It doesn't last long. It said it doesn't last long. Right. It comes on quickly, somewhat severely, but not necessarily causes long-term problems, which is different with chronic glomerular nephritis, which can be caused by a slew of things as well, but this is going to be causing long-term problems. So I don't want to get too much more into it because we haven't talked about the glomerulus yet. Uh, we'll talk about that in anatomy. Nephro don't worry about nephrotic syndrome. Um, this is the patient's peeing out too many proteins. They're losing too many proteins. They're filtering out and they shouldn't be. 
We'll talk about that later on. Um, don't worry too much about interstitial nephritis. I talked to the paramedic students about this a little bit more. This is more of a, it's a very common side effect of medication, of some medications. Don't worry too much about that one. Pyelonephritis, you should know about that. Pyelonephritis, most simply, this is a fancy word for a kidney infection. That's different from a bladder infection, right? Those are different organs. Yes? 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 yes. Bladder and kidney are different. Yes. So how does a kidney get infected? Not from the blood, because blood shouldn't have bacteria. If it did, then you got a big problem. Say that again? No, it gets infected by going up this way, ascending up. Oops, went up too far. Ascending up into the kidney. So it starts down here. The bacteria. Yes, mostly bacteria, yes. And it goes up the uh, ureters into the kidneys this way. From? All the way down here. The bladder? Yes. Okay. So from the outside. From the yeah, urethra, from the yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, from okay. the urethra, up into the oh. bladder, up the bladder, up the ureters, all the way up to the kidneys. It goes backwards. The bacteria goes backwards. Wouldn't they have a UTI before that? Before Probably, that yes. Happened? And they just didn't get a check? Yes. And kept going, kept yes. going. Wow. I don't know how you do that. But. It's a urinary tract infection that has ascended. It's gone upwards. Oh, wow. Okay. Nice. This is going to cause fever, difficulty with urination, some pain and discomfort. I'm going to do this. Do a couple of little taps right on the back right here. If, if I were... tap here and she screams out in pain, now I know what it is. She'll often say it's pain, it's labor pain so bad. She'll describe Put in her back. Polycystic kidney disease. A cyst, we talked about a cyst before, a fluid. Some sort of um, fluid-filled lesion that has some sort of lining around it. And in this case, there's many of them. Lots of cysts in their kidneys. On their kidneys, in their kidneys, throughout their kidneys. There's two types. There's an adult type and a childhood type. The adult type, type is much, much more common and much more severe as it typically involves both kidneys. This right here accounts for about 10% of all the people that are on dialysis in the country. Wow. It's because of an adult polycystic kidney disease. I'm sorry? It's not going to be cancerous, no. It's just a bunch of cysts. It's pretty gross looking at. Wait, all cysts are pus? No, just fluid. Just fluid? Mm -hmm. Ew. Yeah, the adult type Ew. is the more common type. So that's going to cause renal failure, so I'm going to have to get dialysis and then a new kidney. Oh. So you see pictures of it? Sometimes I regret doing this. Yeah, of course. Uh, very quickly, acute renal failure is acute. Typically, they can recover from this. Um, we can see this like a post-surgical patient, maybe if they went on a heart-lung bypass machine, for instance. Chronic renal failure is just that, chronic. It's going to eventually lead to end-stage renal disease. End-stage renal, renal disease means their kidneys are no longer working, which means they have to be on dialysis. When a person's on dialysis, what are they waiting for? A kidney. Or the yes. kidney or death. <clears throat> uremia, emia means in the blood, so this is basically urea that has not left the body like it should have been. In other words, if we see urea in the blood, urea is a waste product, right? Look over, look on the board up here, not down there. Look on the board up here. On the board up here. Urea is a waste product. Urea is a waste product. It should be filtered by the kidneys. 
If it's not being filtered by the kidneys, it's going to accumulate in the blood. So in other words, if we find it accumulating in the blood, that means the kidneys aren't working. All right. Let's just do this one right here. Hematuria. Blood where? In the urine. In the urine. That's one of the things that you look for in a urine test. Uh, we'll talk about those a little bit later on. How about this one, anduria? What does and mean? Without. Without. Without no key. Yeah. Oligo, I don't know what that, one means. that means scanty or few, not enough of something. Uh, oligo. 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 Yeah. Well, you know how I like to put the O's on. Oligo oh. means scanty or few, not enough of something. So oligoria, oliguria. Okay. Um, end stage renal disease. That one you should know about. End stage renal disease. Maybe chronic renal failure. And UTI. Urinary tract. tract infection. So, have you heard of these? Kidney stones. Yes. Okay. Most of the time, kidney stones are made up of, well, much of it is made up of calcium. So this is precipitated. In other words, it's like that Kool-Aid that was left in the glass, that little bit, and the water evaporated out. So all of those little solid particles of sugar and stuff all came together and clumped together. That's what happened here. Now, why some people make them and others don't, it's still not clear. But if someone has had a kidney stone before, they're more likely of getting another kidney stone later, which is why we tell them I don't know, increased risk. Which is why we tell them, make sure you stay hydrated. Stay away from things that are going to dehydrate you. Stay away from alcohol. Stay away from caffeine. We don't want you to get dehydrated. The more dehydrated you are, the more likely you are, likely you are to get another kidney stone. Crazy. Now, no, this, is, uh, this is why it's crazy. Look up here. You see where they get stuck. This is a pretty yes. good representation. Yeah. Understand something. See this ureter right here? This ureter is a tube that has muscle in its walls. Now, what's, what do we know about tubes that have muscle in their walls? They're going this way. Or exactly. This way. So it's going to push that urine from here down. This is not a gutter system. This is not urine just drips down here because of gravity. Urine gets pushed down through here. If there's a blockage, then urine might back up. Yeah. Back up into the kidney, oh. which is still going to try and make urine. Mm -hmm. So it's all going to back up there. It's going to cause that kidney to swell and swell and swell, and it's going to get destroyed in the process. That's bad. We don't want people's kidneys to get destroyed. It's called a hydronephrosis. This kidney's going to have back up, back up, back up the urine, and it's going to cause that to swell up. That's bad news. This is why we take kidney stones seriously. It's not just because they're painful. It's because they could actually do damage to the kidney. And they they usually get stuck in one of three places, either right at the opening here. And this is a uh, renal pelvis. It's like a, a funnel, so it gets more and more narrow. So if it's created here, it tries to make this way get stuck. There's a bend, actually down a little bit more, in the ureter. Over there. Yes. Where it could get stuck. Or right before it goes into the urinary bladder. Those are the three places where it most likely gets stuck. Oh, you said the, uh, the stone is what type of form? It's mostly made up of calcium. And these things are sharp. They look like little pieces of gravel. They hurt. It's not like gallstones. Gallstones are usually smooth, like river stones. These things are painful, yeah. Um, they look like little pieces and of gravel. And it's produced in, our, in the kidney. Yeah. What, are yeah. kid, or, um, what are gallstones made of? Calcium as well? Actually, mostly made up of precipitated bilirubin. Oh, okay. The stuff that makes up like bile. Yeah, is that why it gives it that color? Yeah. Interesting. And they could be stuck in the gallbladder. They could be stuck in the duct coming from the gallbladder. They get stuck in the duct, uh, the common bile duct. And then what happens is the gallbladder tries to squeeze. It increases the pressure, causes a lot of pain. 
Interesting. And why do we need biology? Bio breaks down facts, it multiplies facts. So, when we know what bio, what does that mean? It means you've thrown up everything else. Oh. But your body still says that's they your own stuff. stuff. Oh, it still wants to get rid of things. Because yeah. I was so wouldn't you rather, I was so Wouldn't you rather get rid of yeah. more than get rid of less? Yeah. Just throwing up is your body saying whatever's here is bad, we need to get rid of it now. So you throw up and you throw up and the body says, you know what, let's just keep going. Yeah, I got because let's make sure it's all out. I was so sick. Thursday, Friday morning, I kept pulling and kept pulling and kept pulling. And it was nothing but yellow stuff. Nothing but yellow stuff. And like, like, suds, sudsy. That's gross. I know, but I don't, I don't know. I know exactly what you're talking about. I had the yeah, same thing. That's gross. No, it's not it's gross. Stop talking. Let's go back and throw up. Yeah, for real. And like, the only thing I just kept, I was in the tub for three hours. I kept my water cup up. And because the only thing it could keep me, like my body was shaking, I was cold and hot at the same time. It's a violent process. The body's saying, let's get rid of this, whatever this is. I just had a, a bad experience like that. It was weak, this weekend. Yeah, that was, that was sure, it was bad. But you didn't. But I did. Good. With my mom on the side. Okay. You have to call my mom. Oh, no, I'm never mom, no. Come here now. <laughs> my mom could be in another state. I wouldn't call her. Because you're throwing up. Yeah, literally. Yeah. Mom, I don't know. That's because yeah, your mom generally cares what you throw up. But yeah, they don't. That's the thing. What do you want me to do? That's the first thing she because said. Most, what am I supposed to yeah, do? Yeah, most of the time, as an adult like yourself, or yourselves, it's clinically insignificant. It doesn't really mean much. Um, your body's just trying to get rid of something. And then if you're throwing up, well, then your body's doing exactly what it's supposed to be doing. So uh, most of the time, it's just about now replenishing electrolytes. But, at, at but how much is too much? Um, too much can be measured when you see those um, Projectile? women who are pregnant mm -hmm. and they're throwing up all the time. Because now, not only aren't they getting nutrients, the but now there's babies. Yeah, we call it a paper and it says drop there. So when that That's happens, bad. when that happens, what liquid or solid food will be like the best, the best thing to as far as like, I can't even think about it. Very, very, like, I can't very bland food. I could not eat nothing. You cannot eat anything. I could not eat anything. Bland foods anything. and very small amounts. I had to wait until like ten o'clock okay. Saturday. But you did. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's why nobody really cares that you throw up. Because most of the time it's just clinically insignificant. Really it much. doesn't seem clinically yeah. insignificant. Yes, because it, it hurts. Like, it hurts. It, like your body wants to throw up. Yeah. Because it's like, doing, but like, if you feel it like right here. Yeah, like, I hate because that. Because it's, because it's doing everything in reverse. So yeah, it's a violent process. And if you see a drop of blood in the vomit, don't okay. freak out. Because, of course, you're going to rupture some capillaries in the process. It's a violent process, and things are going yes, to be worse. So if people say, oh, there's blood in the vomit, you have to rush to the emergency room. No, you do not. No. If you throw up your lucky charms from this morning and you see three drops of blood, you're going to live. You'll be fine. Um, when I tell you, though, the last time I got sick, like, I really couldn't lift anything, my whole body went like numb and limp and like just hot and, and, and you said, Yeah, and I like, couldn't move anything. To me that's just not right. I feel like I should be able to mm -hmm. control like, I really couldn't even hold my head up. Yeah, I was very shocked. So I could take control. I don't know how that's clinically insignificant, but you know. <laughs> takes only your body. But then what happened? Oh, okay. I got yeah. very, very, very tired. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Of course you did. You expended a lot of energy and yeah. you don't have any nutrients to replenish it. Yep. So your body says, let's rest now. So you did. True. And then what happened? I guess I felt better. And then you were fine. Yes. Indeed. Relax. You're fine. <laughs> but are we better? Yes, you really are. <laughs> You guys worry too much about nothing. You started it. You teach 
teaching us all about our bodies and the system and how it works, and how <laughs> these was go inside and come out. We work for them. Okay. It's a concern. Uh, here's a good term to know about extracorporeal. Um, Extra. From the outside. Okay. Corporeal's body. Pertaining to the outside of the body. Yeah. Huh. So, this, um, where is L5? Hold on. This is going too far. ESWL stands for, listen to this, extracorporeal shock wave lithotripsy. Oh, Litho means stone. We're going to trip it, in this case, break it up. Hmm. We're going to do that by producing shock waves from outside of the body that are going to pass into the body. They're going to cause the stone to get broken apart. Wow. So that, in turn, makes That's a very long medical term. Yes. Mm -hmm. But what that does is that causes that stone to get broken up, which means it makes it easier right, to, to move on out. In, right? So you don't have to go in and get it. Oh, you don't have to go in and get it. Correct. If oh. we break this stone up here into small pieces using shock waves, outside. the muscles just hurt. Then it's going to be a little tiny piece that are come down here, and then you end up just peeing them right out. Wow, that all depends on the size of the stone. Well, is it does. You're problem? right. You're right. It does depend on the size of the stone. It depends on if the stone will actually break apart. In some cases, it could fill up this whole part right here. Ooh. It'll even take on the shape. Now, that that will use when you can. You can shock the neck. Well, that's called a staghorn calculi. Um, because it looks sort of like deer antlers. Who? A staghorn calculi. No, it looks sort of like, like a... deer antlers. Because it takes on the shape. The stone actually takes on the shape oh. of all of this. So that's going to be, yeah, that's something that shockwave lithotripsy probably won't be able to break up. But that's going to cause hydronephrosis as well. Hydronephrosis. Hydro I'm means water. Hydro means water. Yes? Yes. Yes. So water on the kidney, basically. Condition of water the, on the kidney, but it's not water, it's a vacuum of urine. The NEPH, that means kidneys, right? Is, is this what you said? Nephro means no. kidney, okay. yes. Correct. Oh, nephro. Correct. Sure. Okay. Again, I like to put the O's on it. Yes. Really and what else mean kidneys again? The Reno. Reno? This is a good one to know about. Litho. Litho means stone. Stones in the kidneys. So what would we call that? What would you call it? Kidney stones. Yes. Nephrolithiasis. Litho means stone. Good thing to remember. You'll see that. Like cholelithiasis with all stones. I what does IV stand for? Intravenous. Intravenous. Let me show you what a KV is. Oh. Yeah. Right, you said KUV? Yep. X ray of the kidney is used. Kidney is your bladder. Now, you would think, but x-rays only show up like bone, solid things. You're right. So then how can we see kidneys, ureters, and bladders on an x-ray? Well, they've they got, got something in them. They've got something in them. we got to put some radio opaque dye in them. That's what happens here. You see the bladder fills up. Oh, and you can see the ureter right up here, all the way up into the oh, yeah. renal pelvis. Here, you can see. It's faint. Yeah, exactly. There's like the areas here where it's missing. It's like a blockage. Yeah. Wow, okay. For some reason, uh, there's a blockage or something that's not allowing the urine or the dye in this case to come through here. Wow, that's So at least now we've narrowed it down. This is why we would do a KUV x ray. Ooh. See all these dark patches here? Yeah. That's air. Oh. Gotcha. So the air in their intestines. 
That's weird. Or gas. So K U B is kidneys, urine, urine, bladder. A sphincter is a muscular doorway, like that lower esophageal sphincter. It is a muscular doorway. What that means is, it is a doorway that opens like this, closes like this, opens like this, closes like this, opens like this, closes like this. You'll notice it's plural here. There's more than one muscular doorway that keeps urine from leaving your body. The one is at the base of the bladder. That is called the internal urethral sphincter. That one is under involuntary control. In other words, when your body says, all right, time for the urine to come out, it opens up. But there's another one, another muscular doorway, that's the external urethral sphincter, that's closer to the exit, that is under voluntary control. That's the one we are holding it. Until you're ready to let it go, hopefully. If you have a weak bladder, does that have to do with the lower? Sphincter? It's more about the sphincter than the bladder, yes. Oh, so if somebody is incompetent, they wouldn't have control of it at all? There are degrees of incontinence. Because sometimes women can have incontinence if they laugh or sneeze. Oh, yeah, from having, yeah. From See, having, from from having usually from having multiple babies. Yeah. And multiple parts. Yeah. 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 In men, it's different than women. Why? It's longer. It's longer, seven to eight inches, whereas the females is one to two inches. And it carries two fluids. And it carries two fluids. It carries urine, but it also carries semen. Whereas the female urethra is just yeah. urine. Oh, that's not fun. The term meatus. I know you want to say meatus. Mm -hmm. It is not pronounced meatus. The A is not. It is pronounced meatus. Meatus means an opening. So the opening to the outside world. The urethral meatus just means the opening of the urethra to the outside world. The urethral meatus. Meatus? Meatus. Well, we also have an external auditory meatus that we talked about before, where the external auditory canal meets the outside world. Enuresis, involuntary release of urine. Enuresis, an involuntary release of urine. A nocturnal enuresis is what you call bedwetting. Uh, ah. Yeah. <laughs> so would the first one be back for babies because they don't technically know that they're peeing? Well, enuresis means involuntary release of urine for anybody. Okay. So babies don't have that control yet. They haven't made that connection My yet. And of course, we expect in a child who's potty training to have some nocturnal enuresis. We expect they're going to only have some accidents at night. But then you grow out of that. Hopefully. Or you have a dream. Or you have a dream that you're going to the marathon. Oh, right. I had this one. I had a dream that I had a pussy going on. No. Yeah. <laughs> Pepsi there. And I was sitting on the sofa, it was too long, and I woke up and I peed myself. Yo, imagine, I definitely had a couple of dreams where, yeah, I was out, I was laughing, but I thought it was a pot of something okay. there. 
things not to include in your match.com profile. <laughs> okay. I, I don't. Know. Yeah. 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 Tinder. Okay, do not include that in your Tinder profile that you wet the bed. I don't know, that's what they do. Uh, McTurrishan urination, voiding all means the same thing. King. Yeah. <laughs> I have to void. Okay, thank you. Void means pain too? Oh, it means pain. Ping, yeah. ping, 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 ping. <sighs> Urinary tract infection. What causes this? Bacteria. Bacteria. And most of the time it is uh, enteric bacteria, bacteria from the intestines. Oh, okay. And that makes sense because look where the urethra is located, in that dirty area. So there's a lot of bacteria hanging around there. So is it the same for men, cranberry juice and water? Um, or would they just go straight to antibiotics? Since it's less common in men, it's more likely caused by uh, a catheter that had been put in, or like I said, scar tissue that was there. In that case, um, cranberry juice would only be minimally helpful, but it can still be helpful. But here's what you need to realize, ladies. You need to listen to this. All of you need to listen to this. You should be drinking cranberry juice every day. A small little glass of 100% cranberry juice. Not the cran apple, not the cranberry, not cranberry and vodka. Straight oh, yeah. cranberry, cranberry juice. Yes. No, what did I just say? I literally just said not cranberry and butter. Yes. So the reason for this is not to get rid of a urinary tract infection, but to decrease the likelihood of what happening to begin with. And can you explain the significance of cranberry juice? In it changes the pH it of the, the urine, pH, right. so that which the makes, the makes it inhospitable to bacteria. Yeah. makes the environment less hospitable. So the bacteria aren't as cool with it. So it causes them less likely to be able to ascend the urethra and hang out in the bladder. So I strongly recommend that you're doing that every day, not just when you have a urinary tract infection, then it's too late. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about urinary incontinence. Urinary retention means that the person has a difficult time releasing the urine. And this could cause this can be caused by, uh, for an example, a prostate that's been enlarged, which we see in men as they get older. Bladder cancer. Smoking. Smoking. Number one cause of bladder cancer is smoking. Smoking. Because. When that person is smoking, they're introducing those can cancerous substances into their lungs. A lot of those cancerous substances move across the membranes and end up in their blood. And when they're in their blood, they get filtered by the kidneys. And when they get filtered by the kidneys, then they end up sitting in the urinary bladder. Over time, sitting there day after day, week after week, month after month, it can cause their cells to start to change. So, Somewhere around 98% of the people in the United States who have bladder cancer have bladder cancer from smoking. Um, now, cleaning the guys can cause it. It's just a cell infection. It causes it. But most of the time, it's from smoking. What did you say? Yeah. What? Naphthalene dyes, chemical dyes, and a schistosoma infection. There's a type of parasitic infection. You'll see it in the U.S. or like Asia. GTI or anything like that? No. no. Just that one infection. Or smoking. Yes. And the interesting thing about bladder cancer is when it metastasizes, one of the weird places it metastasize to, I think it's weird, is the skin. So a person can have a growth on their skin, they think, well, this is a weird growth. Maybe it's cancer. So they get biopsied, mm -hmm. and they find out that it is cancer, but it's cancer from the bladder that has spread to the skin. What's the bladder bladder cancer? Cancer? It's not good. Bladder cancer is difficult to treat. Oh, yes, bladder cancer is a bad one. 
Yes. A lot of people die. Don't get bladder cancer. Right. So I eventually, eventually go to 129. Then I would accept it. I accept it after 129. Uh, cystitis, inflammation of the bladder, and then urethritis. Inflammation of the urethra. Inflammation of the urethra. But understand this we categorize. Urethritis is one of two types of urethritis. Urethritis caused by gonorrhea, or urethritis caused by everything other than gonorrhea. So we call it gonococcal urethritis or non-gonococcal urethritis. That's got to tell you something, ladies. There's a lot of gonorrhea. Everyone has gonorrhea. Everyone has gonorrhea. What you say? Now you're going to be out here offending people. Everyone has gonorrhea. Oh, you want to go to the Let's go to the clinic. Let's go to the clinic. Or at least you should assume that everyone has gonorrhea until you find out differently. I heard they said you got to everybody that they got AIDS. Ebola AIDS. No. Ebola, Ebola AIDS. AIDS. Ebola AIDS, syphilis, gonorrhea. Go. All those. You treat every patient like they have them. Because you don't know what they have and what they don't. Okay, that's good. Is that all on the urinary system? Yeah. Sounds great. The end.